everyone, so today we're going to tackle another yoga for weight loss video. Really this is just a, a practice that is intended to wake up and strengthen and perhaps tone uh, all the major muscle groups, um, or at least most of them, uh, while also playing with ease and hopefully increasing flexibility in the body. We're also going to tap into the breath and find what feels good. So to begin today, we're going to start flat on our backs. Go ahead and get comfortable here. Oh, yeah. And I'm a little sore from my previous practice yesterday and the day before, so we'll just see what happens. And you know, that's a good little lesson as we kind of step on the mat and step into the present moment, or a good little reminder to just open your mind up to new experience. Forget what you previously know or have experienced on the mat. Maybe you've tried a video before and didn't get all the way through it or didn't quite like it, wasn't your thing, or your body wasn't really feeling up for it that day. So just kind of hit the refresh button and just open yourself up to seeing what happens. I am happy to guide you through this video today. Let's begin with uh, a nice, long, beautiful neck here, tucking the chin into the chest, closing the eyes. Letting the hands rest either gently at your side or gently on the belly. Mine feel best here on the hip creases today for some reason. Again, just seeing what happens, opening ourselves up to the present moment by bringing our awareness to the breath. Begin to deepen the breath here. Take a nice full belly breath in. The belly might rise as you inhale and fall as you exhale. Awesome, reach the fingertips up and overhead. Keep deepening the breath here. And throughout the practice today, see if you can find nice, long, smooth, deep breaths. I cannot say that enough to uh, just keep bringing your awareness back to the breath. Okay, find a little organic movement here. Spread the fingertips, spread the toes. You might rotate the wrists, rotate the ankles. Then I'm gonna walk my feet, my heels over towards the right bottom corner of my mat. So I'm gonna walk them on over. I'm gonna press into my head and shimmy my shoulders head and shoulders all the way towards the right corner. So I'm kind of coming to the bottom right corner, top right corner, and kind of coming into this crescent moon shape more or less. Now I'm gonna take my right fingertips, grab my left wrist, and just a gentle pull here, really mindful in the body, kind of setting the tone for our practice today. We're gonna to create some heat in the body, but we always wanna work from a place of softness, of ease, of mindfulness, creating strength that way rather than this kind of um, mindless, forceful action. That's a no-brainer. For the last few breaths here, I'm gonna lift the left leg up, cross the left ankle over the right, breathe deep into the left side body, relaxing the shoulders on the exhale. And on your next inhale in, fill the lungs with air, expand. And on the exhale, soften and release everything. We're gonna walk it back through center and take it to the other side. So walking the heels now towards the bottom left corner of the mat, reaching the arms up overhead, and then pressing into the back of the head and shimming the shoulders now over towards the left corner. Taking the left, excuse me, yeah, the left fingertips to the right wrist, reaching up and overhead, and same thing on the other side here, my friends, breathing into the right side body. On the exhale, relax your shoulders down. Keep the skin of the face nice and soft. Notice if you're clenching anywhere, see if you can begin to soften and relax those tight places on the exhale. Lift up the right leg, cross the right ankle over the left, have a little crescent moon here, breathing into the right side body. This feels super great, super yummy with the support of the earth. Inhale, fill the lungs with air, expand. And on your exhale, release and soften everything back to center. Walk your head, neck, shoulders and heels, legs 
back to the center line. Take a deep breath in, full body stretch, point the toes, flex the feet. Then we're gonna hug the knees into the chest, wrap the arms around the shins, scoop the tailbone up, draw your navel down towards the spine, and a couple rocks here back and forth, sure feels nice. Then I'm gonna hug, squeeze knees into the chest, relax the shoulders down and away from the ears. Interlace the fingertips, bring them up and overhead, and then slide them underneath behind the back of the head, the neck. You can keep the thumbs extended here. Some of you might have done this with me before in another video. Keep the thumbs extended here. You might even give yourself a little massage, a little massage, sensual massage. <laughs> Shut up, Adrian. And after you've done that, go ahead and find extension. Long, beautiful neck, elbows extending left to right. So they're gonna to wanna to come in here. See if you can keep them nice and long. In fact, take a second here to pin them to the earth. Find length in the neck. Then begin to flex your feet. Inhale in, exhale, lift your shins parallel to the ceiling. Now, knees are just drawing slightly in front of the hip points so that my lower back can become flush with the mat, kind of kisses the mat there for support. Right away, my abdominal ball becomes a little bit engaged as I scoop the tailbone up, draw the navel down. I'm wiggling my toes, just kind of rotating the ankles and the feet here, inviting that self-expression into the practice at any and all times. So the more we can kind of integrate you into the practice, I feel like one, the better time you'll have. Two, the more benefits you'll reap from the yoga practice. And just the more likely you are to enjoy the workout or the practice itself which means you might return to it again. Enjoying the journey is key, so finding self-expression whenever you can. Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, lift the head, the neck, the shoulders, keep the elbows wide, nice and long. Imagine a lot of space, a big juicy piece of fruit between the chin and the chest, and the lower back's gonna wanna come up here, but I'm going to say no, and support by lowering my navel down and lifting my tailbone up. So I'm kind of tucking my pelvis in so that the lower back can become nice and long. Great, release the fingertips. Bring the palms together. Interlace the fingertips here. Keep the index, the finger extended. I'm gonna move my mic here, okay. And then I'm going to straighten the right leg and draw a line with my index finger over towards the bottom left corner of the mat. Now, so that I don't have any pain or tension in the neck, I'm extending through the crown of the head and I'm keeping bright through the toes and really reaching towards the index fingers. Inhale in, exhale, bend both knees, draw a rainbow up and overhead and take it towards the right side of the room, extending now through the left leg. Inhale in, exhale, back through center. And taking it over towards the right, extend through, excuse me, over towards the left, extend through the right leg. There's a little yoga for the brain too. Keep drawing the navel down as we come back through center and over towards the right, extending through the left leg. One more time on each side, we got this. Lifting up, lengthening through the crown of the head and coming over towards the left, extending through the right leg. And last time through center, we go towards the right. Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, bend both knees, come back to center. Bring the arms back behind the neck, cradle the neck here, and then slowly we'll release everything down, bringing the soles of the feet together, coming to Supta Baddha Konasana with the arms and the legs kind of mirroring each other here. So soles of the feet come together. If the hips are super tight, you might draw your toes out towards the bottom edge of the mat. Otherwise, hike those heels up towards your tail and breathe deep here, close your eyes. Relaxing through the groin, the hips softening. Then gently release your fingertips, bring them to the outer edges of your thighs. Closing the knees here, we wrap this part of our practice by hugging the knees up towards the chest, crossing the right ankle over the left, grabbing the outer edges of the feet, and then going for a little rock. Front to back. This might seem a little silly to you. Do you do it at least three times? Just give her a try. If it feels really good, do it five times. It feels awesome. Rock and roll all day long. I don't care. Okay, coming up to a nice cross-legged position. Point is, find what feels good. 
And from here, we'll lift up through the sternum, find a little grounding opposition by tagging a little weight in the elbows. Take a deep breath in. Then on your exhale, bring your right palm to your left knee. Swim the left fingertips behind. Inhale, lift and lengthen. As you exhale, journey into your twist. Again, inhale, lengthening through the crown of the head. Exhale, moving into the twist. Taking the navel, the belly, along for the ride. Breathe deep into the lower belly. Then exhale, looking past the left shoulder. One more deep breath in. And exhale, gently releasing back to center and taking it to the other side. Left palm to right knee, right fingertips swim behind. Think up through the crown of the head. So we're not leaning back into the lower back here, but keeping the sitting bones grounded so I can lift up through that center channel. What that might mean is you don't twist as far right away, but that does mean that you're twisting from the right place. It's kind of working with integrity and working from the inside out. Let's take two more breaths here. Lifting up on the inhale. Journeying into the twist on the exhale. Take one more deep breath in, lift your heart, and then exhale, bring it on back through to center. Take a couple seconds here to just move in a circle. <clears throat> Warming up the spine here as we inhale, we come forward, exhale around and back. This is also awesome for digestion, which if you're looking to lose weight, I highly recommend you take a second to mindfully analyze kind of your digestion, pay better attention to how your body reacts to the things you eat. Go ahead and reverse your circle. Inhaling as you come forward, exhaling as you come around and back. You might begin to get the neck and shoulders involved here. Warming up the spine. Also get a little booty massage here. Always looking on the bright side. And then coming back up to center. Great. Inhale, reach the fingertips up and overhead. Palms come together as we interlace. Inhale, reaching index fingers forward, up and back. Take a deep breath in here. Smile. And then exhale, releasing the fingertips and diving forward to all fours. <clears throat> Take a second here to come to tabletop position. Wrist directly underneath the shoulders. Press up and out of the palms, press into the tops of the feet. Make sure that you check in with the neck here. So remembering always the neck is a beautiful extension of the spine. So I'm not crunching here and I'm not letting it hang low. But go ahead and keep, keep your gaze straight down and find the length through the back of the neck. Draw your shoulders away from your ears and then see if you can draw your navel up towards your spine. So nice tabletop position here. Take a deep breath in, and on your exhale, press into the tops of your feet, lift your knees, let them hover. We hover in, cow, or in cat here, cat variation, for three nice long breaths. Hang with me. Full body experience, shoulders drawing away from the ears, pressing into the pinky toes even, pressing up and out of the palms, one more breath. And then exhale, we release. Nice work, bring the two big toes together, wide in the knees, as wide as the mat and send it on back, extended child's pose with active arms. So reach your fingertips towards the front edge of your mat as you release your heart and your forehead down. This might be a great place to connect with a little of that self-expression I was talking about earlier. You might sway a little side to side, always finding ways to become more alive in the body, to work out the kinks, Kind of honoring yourself in that way, understanding that everybody is different and unique and beautiful. So our yoga practice should reflect that. Great, draw your navel up. Come back to all fours, walking the knees back underneath the hip points, wrists underneath the shoulders. Two out of three, our second hovering cat here. We inhale in, exhale, pressing up out of the knees. Notice it's not a gigantoid lift here, just a gentle lift. Checking in with that line from the crown of the head to the tip of the tailbone as I draw the shoulders back away from the ears. Press up and out of my foundation. Grow up from the ground. One more breath here as I find that upward current of energy. 
And then I gently release the knees back down. This time, curl the feet under, walk the palms forward. And from here, I send my sitting bones up towards the sky. I really rock the pelvis, bring the belly towards the tops of the thighs, and find heart to earth pose here. Forehead and heart melting to the ground. Spread your palms. On the Hatha Asana, heart to earth pose. So if your shoulders are super tight here, you might not even bring the head all the way to the ground. You might just let it hover here, working on this length in the lower back as we tilt the pelvis, belly towards the tops of the thighs. If you are able to release forehead to the earth, use your exhale to soften the heart further down. And whatever variation you're in, find length in the side body, find integrity in the palms. And we're kind of in a puppy posture here, kind of a half dog. So if you're ever tired and you want to substitute this for downward facing dog, I recommend you do so. Same benefits, just a little less heating, more cooling. Great, take a deep breath in. On your exhale, press in all 10 fingerprints. Lift your heart, come back to all fours. Last hovering cat here, checking in with our core, pressing up and out of the palms. Make sure you have your alignment before you lift your knees. Inhale in, and on an exhale, we gently let the knees hover. Find your action points, drawing the shoulders away. Gaze straight down, navel, lower belly, drawing up towards the spine. Softening that lower rib cage in. Two more breaths. Might find a little bit of a heat here, a little bit of a shake. That's good. That prana energy moving through the body, waking up those muscles. And on an exhale, we release the knees down. Hallelujah, we made it. Curl the toes under. This time, walking the palms forward to come up into downward facing dog. Now, engage the belly here, navel comes to the spine. I lift the left knee, followed by the right. Find that tilt in the pelvis here as I slowly, slowly rise up into our first downward dog of the practice together, pedaling the feet. Finding a little movement here, so not even worrying about the asana shape, downward facing dog, for the first few breaths here. Just kind of finding a little bit of movement Honoring again your body, whatever you did earlier today or last night. Maybe you have something in healing that you're tending to right now as you pedal the feet, press up and out of the palms. Then walk your two big toes together, turn them in just slightly. Imagine the tops of the thighs spiraling in towards each other and then out towards the back of the mat. Then press up and out of your palms, relax your head over, draw your shoulders out and away from the ears. Imagine your two armpit chests, your, your armpits basically, <laughs> looking at each other here. So there's lots of space between the ears and shoulders. One more breath, inhale. inhale. Got excited there. And then exhale, bend the knees generously, belly to the tops of the thighs, hang with me as we gently draw a line with the nose, look forward, and you can either hop the feet up towards the front edge of your mat or go for a slow walk. All the way up towards the front edge. We'll arrive here together, feet hip width apart, and we let it all hang over, Uttanasana. Take two to three breaths here to find a little movement in your body. Bend the knees as generously as you need to. You might grab the elbows, rock a little side to side. You might shake the head a little yes or no. You might pedal the feet. And we all will continue to deepen the breath. Toes are pointing forward. I press in all four corners of the feet. Inhale, lift up to flat back position, sliding the palms all the way to the tops of the thighs on this first one, looping the shoulders, finding that hovering cat even here maybe as we draw the navel in, maintain this length through the sternum, through the crown of the head, and then draw the shoulder blades in together and down and away. So my elbows are pulling back. One more breath here. And on an exhale, we soften and release everything back down. We tuck the chin into the chest, press into our foundation, and slowly begin to roll it up, curling the tailbone in, stacking the spine. And slowly we arrive in Tadasana Mountain Pose. Bring the palms together here at the heart. Take a deep breath in. Lift your sternum to your thumbs. Then soft knees here. Find a little bounce, a little buoyancy. This is going to become super helpful for us in our practice today. 
head over heart, heart over pelvis. I inhale, spread the fingertips left to right and reach it all the way up. On the exhale, diving forward, soft knees here, leading with your heart. Uttanasana, forward fold. Now inhale, slide the palms up to the shins, lift to flat back position, long, beautiful neck, and exhale, soften and bow. Fingertips come to the mat. We step the right foot back into our runner's lunge. Inhale, loop the shoulders, look forward, let your heart really open up towards the front edge of the mat. Breathe, lots of space between the ears and shoulders here. Then make sure you're not on a tightrope, but on two separate planes. Take your left thumb, peel your left hip crease back. Level the hips here, find integrity again, working from the ground up. Inhale in, as you exhale, plant the palms, step it back to plank. Zip the, the legs together by bringing the two big toes to kiss. Spread the palms wide, send the sit bones down towards the heels energetically and send the shoulders away from the ears. Press up and out of the palms, really spike your heels towards the back of the mat. Deep breath in here as you press up and out of the palms, almost hollowing through the upper back. Then on an exhale, slowly lower to the knees, cross the ankles and walk the palms just a bit forward. Coming into a half plank here. So tucking the pelvis, making adjustments, finding that nice, long, beautiful line from the crown of the head to the tip of the tailbone. Great, draw the shoulders away from the ears. Inhale, look forward just slightly. Exhale, slowly lower down, keeping the elbows hugging into the side body as long as you can. Press in your knuckles, slowly lower down, and then release the feet, and inhale, loop the shoulders, lift your heart, cobra. Nice small cobra here to start. Exhale, release. Curl the toes under, press it all the way up to your plank position, then draw your navel up and back as we send it into downward facing dog. Pedal it out. Continue to breathe deep, my friends. And then nice and easy, nothing fancy, step the right foot up into your runner's lunge. Warming up the body here. Finding a little movement. We'll take the right thumb now, maybe peel the right hip crease back. Find space. Level the hips. Can always lower the back knee here, no problemo. Then loop your shoulders, come light on your fingertips, let your heart radiate forward. Strong legs. Deep breath in. On an exhale, rock that back foot up to meet the front. Feet hip width apart or flush together. Hang over, forward fold. Now, deep breath in, fingertips on the mat. Now we lift up to flat back position. So now we have three variations of this flat back. We have fingertips on the mat, palms on the shins, and palms on the thighs. I encourage you to do what best suits you. You can also mix and match them. Take a deep breath in and on your exhale, soften everything and bow. Back all the way up. We spiral the shoulders open, left to right. Spread your fingertips. Take a deep breath in, press into your feet, reach it up. Strong legs and exhale, we come back to the heart. Lift your sternum to your thumbs. Find the soft knees again, nice buoyancy here. As we inhale, reach it up again. Exhale, think up and over, lots of space in the spine. Enjoy this move. Forward fold. Deep breath in as we inhale, lift to flat back. Exhale, soften and bow. Plant the palms, this time step or hop it back to plank. Now, two big toes are together once again. We're sending the heels towards the back of the mat. I'm pressing up and out of the palms, really pressing up and out, so not sinking into my bones here, but finding stability in the shoulders by engaging my core, drawing the shoulders away from the ears, Nice full body experience. Great, you can lower the knees here or you can stay in full plank for this as we hug the elbows into the side body, gently take our gaze forward and slowly lower down, nice and slow. See if you can get a constant rate of speed here and if you eventually fall, just smile, enjoy. Inhale, lift up, cobra. Exhale, soften and bow. Curl the toes under, press up to plank. If that transition's a little too intense for you at this moment, you can always transition by coming to all fours first and then sending it up to downward facing dog, which is where we will all meet, pedaling the feet. Great, walk the two big toes together, drop your left heel, slide the right leg all the way up. Now take your right toes, turn them towards the left side of the mat to level your hips here, and then see if you can square off the shoulders here as well. So it might mean that your leg doesn't go as high but at least we're in a nice juicy alignment, bone stacked right. 
Deep breath in. Exhale, draw a line with your right knee all the way towards the right side of your mat, up and over to kiss your right elbow. Mwah. Then inhale, drop your left heel, send the right leg back up. Deep breath in. Exhale, right knee crosses up and over to kiss the left elbow. Looking forward and exhale back all the way, three-legged dog. Now carving a line all the way through center. Notice how I'm not just going straight through, but I'm thinking up with my navel, up and over, hugging my knee up towards my chest, and then eventually stepping it all the way up and into my lunge. Great, now, this, time I'm gonna this time I'm going to plant too much coffee. I'm like, ah. that's right, yogis drink coffee, although I'm trying not to drink coffee. Plant the back heel. <laughs> Draw your hands to your hips. Inhale, lead with your heart, press into your feet, lift it up, warrior one. Right toes pointing forward, left toes pointing towards the front left corner of the room or the mat. Now if you're a beginner, you might um, just be working on anchoring that back leg. If you're experienced, really let's see if we can get the bottom of that right thigh parallel to the mat. And anywhere in between, of course, my friends, is fine. Tuck your pelvis, draw your navel in. Kind of knit the lower rib cage together here. Find your integrity as you loop the shoulders. And inhale, reach the fingertips forward, up and back. Pull the thumbs back here. Inhale in. Exhale, open up to warrior two. Now you might widen your stance here. Bend a little deeper. Make sure you can see your front right big toe. Excuse me. Pull the right, uh, pull the pinkies back, lift your heart, lengthen your tailbone down. Deep breath in here, looking past the right fingertips. Then on an exhale, flip your palms, straighten your front leg, take your gaze to the left and draw your palms together. Deep breath in here, exhale, warrior two, looking past the right fingertips. Inhale, open your palms, reach it up. Straight leg, exhale, warrior two. Deep breath, lots of space between the ears and shoulders here. Two more times, just like this. Strong legs, that left inner thigh still is nice and charged. I'm stacking head over heart, heart over pelvis as I move through my vinyasa. And then exhale back to warrior two. Beautiful, bring the right elbow to the top of the right thigh, sink deep into that, right leg, breathe into the outer edge of that right hip, then trace a line with your left fingertips along the left side body behind the left ear, and then reach up and over towards the front of the mat or the room. So you might be thinking that we're here, but we're actually going for the side stretch here, engaging the belly, drawing the navel back. Heart is spiraling up towards the sky. In fact, you might cheat and take your left palm and smear it across your rib cage to remind you to open up here. Then return left fingertips to reach forward. Notice how I'm not collapsing into the right shoulder here, but I'm keeping that integrity, that space. I'm pressing into the outer edge of that back foot. If I want to, I can release the right fingertips to the ground here and open up for one breath. Take a deep breath in here and exhale. Send your gaze down, release everything as we pivot on the back leg, plant the palms and step it back to plank or half plank. This time choose your vinyasa so you can be at half plank or at the top of a push up. Inhale in, shift forward, exhale, chaturanga practice. Hugging the elbows in, you might go all the way down to cobra or this time you might flip it to up dog, pressing up and out of the palms, drawing the shoulder blades in and together, lengthening through the crown of the head. Inhale, as you exhale, draw your navel towards your spine and send it on back, downward facing dog. Great, bring the two big toes together. Slide the sole of the left leg up. Keep pressing up and out of the palms here. Find that upward current of energy in the arms so that we're not hurting the wrist. Now, turning the left toes towards the right side of the mat, leveling the hips, squaring the shoulders. Take a deep breath in as you drop through that right heel. And then on an exhale, we bring the left knee towards the left elbow to kiss, looking forward. Press up and out of the palms. Deep breath in, exhale, send it back. Crossing it over, left knee to right elbow. Deep breath in. And exhale, three-legged dog. 
Last time, carving a line through center. Think up and over as you squeeze, squeeze. Hug those left, excuse me, hug the left knee up towards the heart. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. Aha, and then we plant it. Finding your runner's lunge here for one breath. Then planting that back foot now for warrior one on the other side. Peeling the left hip crease back. I'll find my footing, lift my heart. Then whenever you're ready, inhale in, reaching the fingertips forward, up and back. Pull the thumbs back as you lift your heart, tucking the pelvis, lengthening tailbone down. Hands can also stay on the waistline here, no problem. Breathing deep. Inhale in, on an exhale, open up into warrior two. Outer edge of that back leg is nice and strong. Bending deep into that front leg, I pull my pinkies back. And again, just make sure you can see your front big toe. Breathing deep, shoulders away from the ears. Flip the palms, inhale, straighten the legs, palms come together. Deep breath in, tuck your pelvis, tailbone lengthens down. On an exhale, send your focus past the left fingertips, a deep bend, warrior two. Inhale, straighten that leg, draw energy up through both arches of the feet. And exhale, Virabhadrasana two. <sighs> Inhale. And exhale, navel draws in. <sighs> Inhale, reach it up, straight legs. Exhale, full body experience, strong legs, softening that lower rib cage, maybe bend a little deeper. Let's do one more, deep breath in. And exhale, take up space. Warrior two. Great, this time bending the left elbow, bringing it to the top of the left thigh, tracing a line with the right fingertips all the way up the side body behind the ear and reaching up and overhead. You might take that right palm and use it to maybe smear something, I was gonna say like honey or something, uh, across the rib cage to spiral the heart up and then bring your fingertips back. Again, not collapsing left ear to left shoulder but finding that extension through the crown. Strong legs engaged in the belly, pull your right thumb back. Lean back into the pose for one breath. Then you can stay here to go a step further. You might release your finger, left fingertips down, go a little deeper, bending into that left hip, and then inhale, open up through the right wing. Take one more breath here, strong in the back leg, and then exhale, send your left, excuse me, send your gaze down, bring the fingertips back to your mat. And we vinyasa. You can send it back, extended child's pose here right away, or vinyasa. Stepping it back to plank or half plank, shifting your weight forward, hugging the elbows in. We either inhale, lift up to cobra or up dog, yogi's choice. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, check us out in the Foundations of Yoga series. And uh, we could just kind of break down the poses one by one there, and it's super helpful and yummy for even experienced yogis just kind of go back to basics, back to that beginner's mind. Okay, I'm here in downward facing dog. I'm pedaling it out. I'm going to slowly walk my feet towards the center of my mat here. And then I'm going to heel toe, heel toe the feet as wide as the mat. Toes turn out just slightly, heels are in. And then gently I'm going to look forward, lengthen through the crown of the head, then soften the knees as I slowly come into a deep yogic squat. Strong legs here. Palms come together at the heart, if we can. If I'm feeling a little unstable here, or perhaps my feet aren't able to come down, who cares, no problem. Keep the heels lifted, keep the fingertips on the ground, and breathe deep into these babies. Nice, long, beautiful neck here. If you are able to come palms to the heart, then use the outer edges of your arms to press into the inner legs, I'm gonna turn this way so you can see me a little better, and then find resistance there, hugging the knees back into the arms. So there's a little bit of resistance there if you're able to bring the palms here. Any variation is good, checking in with the hips, breathing deep. Great, then no matter what variation you're at, heels lifted or down, bring your left palm to the center line and inhale, open up through your right arm. Now you might start right, stop right here, that's about as far as it'll go. Maybe you can go all the way up towards the sky, but anywhere in between is nice, and also to find a little movement is quite nice as well. Keep pressing into the outer edges of the feet, slowly release it back down. 
Right palm replaces the left and we inhale, open up through the left wing. Oh yeah. Breathe deep. Again, it might just come this far and that is A-OK, -okay. might come a little bit. I find that when I give myself permission to move and find what feels good, I often find space and length that I didn't even know was there. So it might look a little silly, it might even feel, it might feel even sillier, but give yourself uh, permission to move however feels good. Pressing into the outer edges of the feet, I inhale one more time and exhale, come back to center. Crow pose or bakasana, plant the palms, gently come up onto your toes. Walk the palms slightly forward, inhale, think up and over. I'm gonna gently walk my knees towards the armpit chest, keep my gaze looking forward, and I might just get this far, guys. Nice little balancing pose prep here. We have a whole video just on this pose, nice and long in the neck, and I might just rock a little back and forth here. Full body strengthener as I press up, I might lift up onto the toes, Lift up off the toes for one second here. Again, gaze straight forward. If I want to go into full bakasana, I might walk my knees all the way up, find that length as I lift one toe, then the other. Breathe deep here, pressing up and out of the palms. Inner arches come together. I find length, space between the ears and the shoulders. And then I release back down. Great, slowly transitioning onto the sitting bones. I send my legs out in front, inhale, reach it all the way up, maybe shake out the legs, and exhale, forward fold. Now the knees can bend as generously as you need to here, just finding a little length in the lower back, relaxing the head over. Then releasing, rotate the wrist a couple times if you need to. and then coming back onto flat back. Yay! <clears throat> Soles of the feet flat on the earth, knees up towards the sky. If you need to take, take a second here to kind of just windshield that wiper of the legs, that always feels good. Again, always sneak in those little grace notes, those little pieces of movement that make you feel good and then are gonna make you stick with your practice. They're going to encourage you. Great, press into the palms, inhale, lift the shins again parallel to the ceiling. Tuck your tailbone a little bit so that lower back can become flush with the mat. Then once again, palms come together, we interlace, keeping the index finger extended just like we did at the beginning of our class or our video. Now notice how I'm not drawing my shoulders up towards the ears but rather finding that resistance, drawing them down and away. I'm gonna inhale, straighten the right leg just as I did before. And exhale, lift the head, the neck, the shoulders, and draw that line once again over towards the left side of the mat. Deep breath in here. And exhale, switching through center and taking it to the other side. Inhale. And exhale. And really, rather than say inhale, exhale here, I'd rather you just follow your breath, moving from side to side. When your fingertips go to the left, you extend through your right leg. And when your fingertips go to the right, you extend through your left leg. How about that? Moving with your breath, keeping the navel actively drawing down. I keep hitting my mic here, I apologize. Now to avoid any ten tension or tightness in the neck, keep lifting your chin and keep length through the crown of the head. Shoulders drawing away from the ears. I'm working my lower abdomen here, breathing deep. Keep it going. And now I'm gonna come back to center. Before I release my head down, I'm gonna bring my palms to the back of the head and bicycle, right knee to left elbow, straight and right leg. And then switch. And switch. And switch. Two more on each side, switch. And switch. Switch. That exhale is necessary for me and switch. <laughs> okay, great. Come back to center. Release it down. And again, Supta Baddha Konasana. This time, bring your hands to your belly. Pet it out. Great. Bring your left hand to your heart. Right hand stays on the belly. Elbows are relaxing down at your sides. Close your eyes. Job well done. Take a nice deep breath in. And exhale out. 
You might stay here for a couple breaths. You might extend the legs out long, coming into more of a corpse pose or shavasana, arms at your side. But whatever you do, just take at least a couple breaths, if not longer, to reconnect back to the natural ebb and flow of your breath, to notice how you feel in your body. And be at peace.